years and years ago. I started my coaching journey, if you want to call it that, up at Stadium as well, up at HBF. Mm. And I never ever forget this guy coming for a session. And he's quite a sort of gruff sort of guy. He's like quite a big, strong bloke. And he said, mm. I don't want to learn how to body roll, leg kick, breathing ball. He said, I just want to learn how to pull harder. <laughs> and I said, well, I can show you how to pull harder, but mm. unless your hand is in the right position, mm. all that application of force that you've got here mm. is just not going to serve you mm. any benefit whatsoever. Mm. Hi there, and welcome to another Swim Smooth video in which we seek to both simplify the complexities of the freestyle stroke and demystify some of the common folklore that might actually be proving detrimental to your swimming. My name is Paul Newsom. I've been helping swimmers, triathletes, and their coaches over the last 20 years find ways to tweak their stroke technique with easy fixes and in plain language that you can easily apply yourself from watching these videos. Today, we're going to be taking a brief look at the catch and pull through phase of your stroke, an area which we devoted an entire DVD, the Catch Masterclass, to way back in 2010. In this video, we won't explore those depths exactly. Instead, we'll focus on insights from two recent video analysis sessions that I've conducted. We'll delve into the thought processes of two swimmers regarding their catch, understanding the reasons behind their thoughts. Most crucially, we'll leverage remastered video footage created over a decade ago to help you visualize that the direction of force applied during your catch holds greater significance than the actual amount of force applied. Let's head back to Mark now as he discusses why he's pulling through so forcefully. Look at how much force is being applied there, straight down. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. But that force is not moving you forwards, it's just lifting you up. Mm. It's quite interesting to notice the difference between your left and your right, look, in terms of the cavitation. Yeah. Yeah, there's hardly any on, no, the, left. on the left hand side. Yeah. And it's actually got a reasonably good bend at the elbow as well. And it needs it, a little bit more. And it's funny, that I don't feel like that one's doing as much work. I feel like the, the right, and that's probably because because I am pushing so hard to try to get my head out of the water. I feel like, because I haven't got a problem with my shoulder, but the other reason I wanted to do this is I could feel a bit of muscle tightness there. On the right side yeah. and I think if I just keep going like this I'm gonna end up blowing it you know absolutely and you can see here there's a, like I say a lot of force application there mm -hmm. driving it down yeah because I think oh, if I push harder and get more speed up it'll lift everything up and I'll be good but ironically it's doing the opposite right so it's lifting and mm -hmm. actually sinking down mm -hmm. there at the uh, at the back so Mark's thought process is a common one especially if you're a big strong athlete trying to muscle your way through the water but what happens when you are really big and strong and have the potential to pull through with a lot of force and then end up blowing out your shoulders because of it? Worse still, what if you then got told to refine it with a bit of the G word, glide, and to focus on swimming long and strong? Well then, you could really be in trouble like our next swimmer, TV presenter and radio host Sean McManus, a former professional Aussie rules football player for the Fremantle Dockers. Someone who is training to swim the 20 kilometer rock nest swim by himself in just over three months time. The secret to a good catch and pull through is to literally bend it like Becky Adlington here. Yeah. Now, you're not doing that, but it's not because you're not strong enough or fit enough or haven't got the proprioception to do it. The only reason this left hand is doing that is again, because of the reliance that we have on propping and lifting. So as soon as you push down, it takes us a very long time to actually rectify that stroke. And in that meantime, all of the effort, all of the load is going on that left shoulder. So again, that's why the shoulder blew out. I want you to lock your elbow out. You're going to apply pressure here and you're going to try and push down against me with a straight arm like you've got here. Yeah, yeah. Push me down. Come on, Sean. Now, <laughs> yeah. you're going to see yourself in the video. You are a much bigger, stronger guy than me yeah. and I'm hardly resisting you. Yeah. Push it down again. There's just no strength here with that yeah. lever, but if you're to bend the elbow, now pull through, much stronger. Because your pecs and your lats are starting to come into play. If you add in that rotation that everyone's been talking about, bring that foot around as well. Yeah. Now, what Rebecca's doing, is she's tipping the fingertips down and pulling through like this. Way better, look at that. Yeah. It takes all the pressure off the shoulder, and then most importantly, you're actually moving water back behind you. Every time those hands go into the water, they drift up towards the surface and we put the brakes on. 
Looking at that now, why do you think you do that? Hopefully it's obvious on the left arm, because the left one's being used like a lever to prop yourself, but why would you do it on the right, do you think? What do you think you might be thinking about at that point within the stroke? When you're at full reach, what are you trying to do? Maybe stretch out a bit. Yep, why? The most common thing to hear people saying about how to improve somebody's efficiency in the water is to try to lengthen forwards and glide as much as you can. Yeah, yeah. But the problem with that is when we glide, when we over glide, which yeah. is what you're doing here, you're applying brakes and you're actually pushing yourself backwards yeah, yeah. at that point. It's yeah. clear as day to see that. But so many times you hear people say, no, lengthen it out, yes. swim long and strong or what have you. Yeah, yes. That's one but of that's my holding you back. things. It's one of my things in my mind. Okay. Yeah. So you could really hear that moment of realization in Sean's voice there. The good news is he's now on the path to curing those overgliding tendencies and putting so much force through his left shoulder, which seriously threatened his chances of getting across the rot nest. But how? Both Mark and Sean are clearly very strong athletes, but it doesn't matter at all how much force they apply to the water if all that force is being applied either straight down or in Sean's case, away from him as well. So now we'll finish with this quick visualization from a video of Mr. Smooth, who, by the way, is being relaunched next week and you'll be able to download for free from swimsmooth.com. In the video, you'll hear me talking about the controversy surrounding whether or not you should be tilting your wrist to engage the start of the catch in a sort of gathering motion and what this means for the direction and application of force in your stroke. Enjoy that retro intro. And don't forget, if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe using the little bell thing down below. And I look forward to seeing you in our next video. One of the interesting things about Mr. Smooth when we released him some coaches around the world are concerned that elite swimmers don't tip their fingertips down at the front end of the stroke to tilt the wrist to engage that catch. However, upon close inspection, we can see that almost all do. Let's now take a look at some video demonstrating this. Arguably one of my favourite swimmers here, Rebecca Adlington, doing precisely that. Olympic bronze medalist Cassie Patton, also. David Davies, Olympic silver medalist and bronze medalist. In slow motion, we can see that awesome high elbow catch and pull through, and then focusing on the initiation at the front, quite clearly tipping the fingertips down. Laura Manadou, Olympic champion and world record holder, gauging the catch to initiate the start of the front of the stroke. Michael Phelps here, beautiful side on shot here. And as we zoom in a little bit closer, even the entry going into the water is pre-set up to initiate the catch just by keeping the fingertips angled slightly down. Here's Shelley Taylor-Smith, seven times world marathon swimming champion. Tipping her fingertips down, bending the elbow and pressing the water back behind her. Because she doesn't spend any time pressing the water down towards the bottom of the pool, she's not creating excessive lift at the front end of the stroke. Because of this, she doesn't then have to kick ultra hard to keep her body in that perfectly horizontal position. Sun Yang here as well, world record holder for the 1500 freestyle. So as you're lengthening forward, just be careful to keep the fingertips angled slightly down. Not shortening up your stroke, but like with anything, it's still possible to overemphasize this. Imagine you are directing water back behind you with the palm of the hand facing rearward.